Hi guys, welcome to Calport Woodcraft. I'm Carl, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dyeing some pieces of pine board with some food colouring. It's an experiment, never done it before. I looked around on YouTube, couldn't find anything on it. So I thought I'd try it myself, see how it works. Somebody out there must have done it as well, but uh, I'm unable to find it. So the reason I'm going to be doing this is because I've got a project or several projects what I've done in the past, what I thought this would quite look quite cool on. So stay tuned towards the end of the video because I'll be showing you the bonus section of the video, which will be this type of projects I'm going to be using on in the future. So the first, so the first pieces of timber we've got, the first piece of timber we've got is this light pine board and we're going to see how it affects this. We've got a more orangey coloured board with some grain running through it. And then again, we've got a lighter board, but with heavier grain running through it. And we've got a red dye, a green dye, and a blue. And remembering these are all food colourings. Uh, at the end, I'll probably put some shellac or some varnish of some type on there to see how that covers as well and how it dries so to see if we can use it in future projects so stay tuned guys and we'll start the process now so i highly recommend you wear some gloves for this guys and some scruffy clothes because you do not want to get this food coloring on any decent gear which you probably won't wear in the workshop anyway so i'm going to Start off with the red, we'll just pick one and go with it. So we've got the red, I've got three old Chinese takeaway tubs here and some water. See if we need to water it down a bit. And we'll start, give it a good shake first. I feel like I should have had two of each board. But anyway, let's just... So you can see it's a nice dark rich colour. I'm probably going to water it down a, there's no science involved in this, it's obviously all experimentation. So I think that's about 50%, a little bit more. That's more than 50% now. Probably, that's probably 70, 30 actually now. So I've just put uh, an old shelf down here just to protect the work surface. Give it a good mix. I'll show you that close up. So initially, I'm I'm uh, really happy with how that's come out. We'll have to see how it dries. So we'll just put that to one side. Also, for the amount I made, there's loads left. And obviously that was, I think it, it must have been about 70% water. So you could get a lot darker, richer colour. And we'll probably try that at the end again. Let's have a go with the green. We'll do that on, should we do the green on this? We'll do the green on the one with a richer grain. Mm -hmm. This time I'm only gonna put a tiny bit of water in. So this time, this is definitely like 50-50. Another piece of rag.
Again, I think that's worked pretty well. Uh, I really don't like the colour. It's disgusting. But it's taken well, so let's have a go with the blue one. And that's come out a really nice pale blue. Let's see if we can darken it up a bit. I'm just going for straight dye this time. Obviously there was already water in the cloth as well. That's darkened it up a bit. It's definitely a light colour of the blue. And you can see the grain fruit which is nice. So we'll leave those pieces to dry and we'll get on with the next stage of the project and this is the bonus section this should be a little bit more exciting but we'll i'll show you exactly why i'm testing these bits of uh dye out these food coloring dyes and uh it should make for a nice project in the future so we're leaving the uh the new workshop and we're going over to the old shed i'll show you that now so welcome to my old mini workshop guys as you can see if anyone saw my old youtube videos from eight months ago this is where it all began now it's turning into a bit of a wood stone some of my tools are still in here and i can't wait to get all this out of here and back across into there and just use this as a wood store but anyhow i digress so i've got these cable reels and i've been selling these on ebay as these bent wood coffee tables and the harder part of the grain doesn't burn and that's a nice look so it, i thought if i can dye that with some type of dye they would look pretty cool so that's what the project is aimed at and we'll go out I've got Ben in a few bits of wood now and see how it looks. Just a quick one for you on the wood bedding guys i highly recommend that you either do it outside or you're in a place where there's you know not much sawdust or wood chippings or anything like that that could accidentally catch fire and just you know be aware that the the fragments can small there for hours afterwards so just be really safety conscious when doing this and elevate it off the surface use scrap material underneath and just just take care basically uh, so that's that. So we've bent all them bits of timber now, and uh, let's see how they look when we when we stain them. So we'll go through the same procedure again of dyeing the timber. I'm just going to give them a light brushing off first, just to make sure there's no. ash on there which one did we do so i'm thinking the red undiluted on them benwood coffee tables would look pretty sick especially after it's been polyed let's have a look anyway so should we go for the red first and i'm going to do it undiluted Obviously there's still a bit of water in the rag, but so I've soaked all that up. We 
But guys, I'm really happy with this now. So as a comparison, as a comparison, you can see the previous one un, untorched. I think it looks nice. I like it. I'll just turn the light out and see if we can see it better. So I've just turned the LED light out, just to see if we can get a better visual of it. And I think it looks pretty cool. You can see there where it's patchy, that's because the wood was so sappy, but I think it looks good. Anyway, let's move on. So now for the blue, I'll keep this diluted as it was before. I think with the blue, you're definitely gonna have to leave it undiluted or just a really tiny bit, but it's a really pale blue and it just gives it a tint. It looks almost weathered. Again, I'll just turn the light out. Looks nice though, unusual. You can't, it's really not picking up the blue tint though on this on the camera, so I'm sorry about that guys, but there is a very pale blue tint, but it's almost looking still pinky next to the red, but it's not. And then the last one, green again. You know, I don't know if I shook that blue properly, but anyway, green again. I brought the green back over for a comparison again. And I really like this one. And you like what the sort of the Jupa Jung ding ding dong ding dang a dong dong. So thanks for watching guys and that's it for today. If you like what I'm producing, please subscribe and follow. Uh, all helps and comment, feel free to comment. And hopefully we all learned something today that you know, it works pretty well and they've all finished really well. Uh, they've took the lacquer well, they've all dried great and I'm definitely gonna be using it in the future. And uh, that's it, so see you in the next one guys, bye bye.